Welcome in, everybody. It's another uh, episode, post-match episode, kind of a player ratings post-match recap type video. I don't know what we're going to call rumors. it. Transfer rumors. I don't know. It's, it's just a it's just, uh, smorgasbord of... Yeah, cornucopia of all the drama that happened in the, <laughs> the past the 24 Megazord, hours. The Megazord <laughs> of information for the Power Ranger nerds out there. I like it. Yeah. Look, Voltron. We're, we're Voltron, if you're, Voltron, if you're older, yeah. a little bit older. Yep. I, like I was it. a Voltron kid. Were you? Yeah. We're, 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 we're starting off terrible here. <laughs> Sunday morning. It's early. Yeah. We're in it now, guys. Uh, we'll get another sip of coffee. Um, no, look, that's it's Doug, been a, that's it's Doug's been a thing. Before. That's Doug's thing. You don't get to sip coffee. Oh, I'm so don't. sorry. Yeah. Um, I'll, no. I'll sip a Coke. There you go. I'm going to sip my coffee anyway because nobody's going to tell me what to do. Um, All right. No. So it is, yeah, it is the morning, <laughs> the morning after. Jamal TRA just pink panthering somebody in Mercedes Benz Stadium to make a 2 1 win over Toronto. And the team had no business winning 2 to 1, but they did in literally the very last minute. You watched it from home. What, 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 were, you, what were you thinking? I was mad because I was tweeting another, another draw with the puke emoji. And as I hit that, <laughs> My Twitter refreshed, and it's you tweeting on our Scarves and Spikes account. Oh my God, Atlanta United won two to one. And then I'm like, what the hell happened? And then they were already, they were basically going to highlights on 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 MLS. And then all of a sudden, you just see Tiara with the ball, and he goes in. And I'm like, what is going on? How, how, how did this happen? And like this, this happened a couple times during the game. There were points where you know, something important was happening. And specifically, I think it was like twice with Atlanta United, um, you know, almost scoring where they were showing a highlight. And then all of a sudden it goes to a chance and like you're missing the build up to everything. So a little frustrating on that. But at the end, I'm like, I, I was I was so mad because it would have been so cool to see it. But damn it, I got to stay off the Internet. But and then I just wrote, oh, yeah, well, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I was wrong here. <laughs> you know, I've, I've gone back and watched the, the replays. And, yeah, it was kind of frustrating because you – at least the live part of it, you didn't see how he came out. Now they showed the replay and you see all the Toronto players, you know, walking back and they're just trying to take their time because they know like you're past stoppage time at this point. And they're just taking their sweet time and he's taking his sweet time getting up and he was hugging the ball on the ground. Meanwhile, Jamal Tiari is back there just taking a sip of water. And then, and by the way, I've seen some people say like, Oh, that, that was, that should be illegal. That's, that's not the rules. That's not the rules. Um, first of all, it's a live ball. It's a live ball. You can you can exit and enter outside the pitch uh, when it's a live ball. Even if it was a dead ball, the ref has the final say. And if the ref is okay with you going and getting a drink of water, which every ref in the world is, that's not the same thing as you go into the bench or something and like chatting with your coach. And then him saying, no, no, you can't come back in until I say so. Two different things. So I've seen people trying to twist that, mostly not Atlanta people, trying to twist that into, oh, well, that shouldn't that shouldn't have counted. No, that's crap. That's not the rules. So um, got to throw that out there. But the fact that he he just calmly got the drink and just kind of walked back out, and he's like just watching him and no Toronto. There was one Toronto player, and I forget his name, but he finally turned around and just started screaming at – Gavron and was like losing his mind and just he just never saw him until it was too late and then that was the Caleb Wiley guy right I yeah that was fighting so. with Caleb Wiley I think so um but I never got another good look so I mean <laughs> he it's crazy <laughs> he took his water and his soul <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> wife and kids and house and everything else it was so dude it was one of those things like we've seen some wild stuff in the bins. We really have. Thank God I've been able to be there for a lot of these things. But like that was just goofy. That was goofy. Like I, I was I, like, so the way it happened for me, I'm sitting up there and obviously in the press box, I'm finishing up my article, right? I did the first reaction articles go up on scarves and spikes.com pretty much at the final whistle. And I'm like, you know, doing all my stuff, just trying to get it done. And I'd look down for a second after that initial, after he saved the ball, I looked down, and I was getting ready to hit post. And then I look up. And as I look up, I start hearing 
the bins like start to kind of like come to life. And I'm like, what's going on? Cause I couldn't really see exactly where Tari was at. And then I see him sneaking out from, from the goal. And I'm like, Oh no, he's not going to do this. He's not going to do this. I'm sitting there and like me and Jackson are sitting there together. And we're like, all right. And then he, he throws the ball down and I'm like, Oh, there it goes. And then he gets around him. I was like, dang, Tari got them quick feet, got around him. And for a split second, my worst fear was he's going to do all this and then miss an open net. <laughs> I was like, please, please let this hit the back of the net. But um, just a just a phenomenal, stupid, but amazing moment in Atlanta United history. Yeah, for sure. And, and what we talked about on Wednesday was that how big this game was. A draw, yeah. it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you have a loss, you're now six points behind Toronto yep. for the the eighth spot. And then other teams are probably catching up on you as well because you only because you got zero points. But no, instead you got the win, Toronto gets the loss, now you're tied with them, and you're you're back in the the area here uh, of some of these other teams. And you look at the schedule, you look at how many away games, away MLS games that they have in a row. I think it's three. And we're going to talk about it in a minute here. Almada is, the tweets this morning seem like he's gone, gone. Yeah. You're without Yakamakis, who, spoiler, has already gotten hurt. For <laughs> I, I don't mean to laugh about him just getting hurt, but it's just like, rinse, repeat, right? Like, yeah. it's just constantly but also, happening here. All, like, this entire episode could be called, Thank God Atlanta United has finally gotten lucky. A few times, like yeah, right. You, you missed out on Gigi getting injured again because it sounds like it's going to be pretty rough. You you got some crap that finally went your way last night. Like you've had things going for you, and it's like cool. This never happens. Yeah, it's 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 nice to have some some nice nice things happen here. But yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to be without you know two DPS here. You're hopefully going to get Saba back here sooner than later. And, you know, Rios did a nice thing last night with a nice assist. Tiare scores a goal. You're going you're gonna to need these guys for sure. Yeah. To step 100%. up here in, in the next three weeks until, what, I think the transfer window opens like right before the Columbus game. Um, yes, that's the 20th. I forget the yeah. exact date, but it's around that time, yeah. Yeah. So, so. you're, you're going to have to go with three MLS games and an Open Cup game without – without two TPs and you know, who knows how long it's going to take to, you know, bring someone on depending if it's within the league or whatever. And then you've got, then we're going to be on visa watch all over again. So that's why this game and, you know, I know Sydney disagreed with me. I said that this game, especially if Almada was playing is you needed to get the most out of this and you got the most out of Almada scored a goal. And yeah, I mean, this is, this is just huge for this team for potentially making the playoffs. We're going to look at these possible, these three points or two, really, if you just want to look at it fairly here, because it, it was going to be a draw, you're going to look at these two extra points and that could be a difference of being in or not or it, positioning wise. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like this is exactly what happened last year, right? You ended up pretty decent playoff spot, but then of course you had to, you had to play the one team that you didn't want to play. And you can't go predicting like who you want to play in the playoffs at this point but you can predict how you could or could not be in the playoffs period. And right now, four games in under Rob Valentino, you're, you're doing everything that you can to get points. You, you've got 11 points, right? No, sorry. Three, six, eight, eight points. Um, since he's been here, I mean, one of those each home and away, a win and a draw. So like you're doing the thing that you need to do. You really needed to get, get right at home. And we'll say this. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't that they played a pretty game. It was not a great game of soccer. Like it's not the the issues aren't fixed, but like Rob Valentino said last night in the press conference, like from a man management perspective, you, you just have to celebrate the win, like give them a moment to celebrate the win because, you know, let that momentum kind of build, let, let them have fun with it. But there are things that need to be fixed. And that's one of the things that I asked Rob last night in the press conference was like, you're four games in, like what is going well for you? And what do you what do you see that you need to work on? And, you know, I mean, he he mentioned a handful of things that need to be worked on. It's not lost on him that like this game 
would have been totally different had we not just witnessed one of those goofy, like once in every decade type goals. Um, but he did say, and Noah Cobb said the same thing after I asked Noah Cobb in the locker room, like the same question. And they both kind of said it's the mentality. Like the mentality, it's not that it's changed per se. They come in with the same mindset, but one, they've been a little more resilient. And two, they've, they've finally had some luck go their way and, or they've created their own luck. And sometimes that's the difference. Like, you know, luck is luck, but when things aren't working, you gotta, you gotta change it up. And, and, and Rob used my freaking word last night that I've been going on about pragmatic. He, he said it and he, you know, I think it's true. You maybe didn't have the best run of form last night, but it doesn't matter because you got three points and that's what you needed. And and hopefully we'll look back in the playoffs and say, well, that's where they finally got right at home and they haven't lost a game there since. Yeah. Not and, and, and it's none of this has been pretty, right? Yeah. None of these games under Rob have, have been pretty, but you're getting results here. And unfortunately that wasn't happening under Pineda. Yeah. Yeah. And th there's been a lot of talk already uh, about, you know, is Rob the guy? Is you know, what, what are we going to do here? Do you need to bring in more DP? Do we need to wait on DPs for the manager? All of that. Is he going to be the manager? There's a lot here, but I I'm say it again. I'm just very happy that Garth is in charge here because I feel like he's going to make the right decisions. Yeah, definitely. But speaking, speaking of decisions, of ah, look at that. Right? Hey, what was the tweet this morning? Uh, was it Fabrizio Romano saying that Tiago Mata has uh, finished up his uh, medical for Botafogo and that he will be going to Botafogo for six months and then join Club Lyon in France in January. So, which is exactly kind of what we assumed would happen there. The Eagle football group is essentially using it as a, as a springboard to just get him over to Europe because I imagine Atlanta's price tag would be a little different <laughs> for a European club. I think uh, if it were a straight, you know, straight shot, but this way the Eagle football group gets him under their control and they can do what they need to do with him. Atlanta gets, I think is what the word or the number was 20 million, which is, Hey, whatever you're making money, who cares? You're freeing up a DP spot. Um, Yeah. I mean, we look, we talked to Almada last night in the locker room and he talked very much in the past tense, very much of, of his time in Atlanta. Um, one of the questions that I was going to ask Doug, you know, asked a handful of questions in the beginning and, and I didn't want to have him kind of rinse and repeat the question, but I wanted to ask, you know, could you sum up your time in Atlanta? And, uh, something that Doug asked was, do you feel like you've grown as a player in Atlanta? And he said, yeah, absolutely. And he kind of went to, you know, explain his time in Atlanta and what it's meant to him and everything else. And I mean, it was a good, it was a good conversation. And he mentioned, he was like, you know, it's, it is sad uh, when you, when you leave a place that you've been at for a few years. And um, even though it's, it's for good things, but you, you know, you're going to miss all these people that you met and everything else. So it, everything he was, he was saying was very much a, uh, it's, it's a done Nazi. deal. Huh? It was classy. Oh, it was absolutely classy. Yeah. I mean, it was, and he, he handled it exactly how he should. Um, but also, I mean, it, it more or less just confirms that things will be happening sooner than later, which is fine. We, we knew it was coming. Was he getting his medical check while you guys were talking to him? Like, were they just like feeling up the legs and, and all that? What you guys, I'm were, wondering were interviewing? if, uh, if that's why it took him so long to come out of the, out of the showers. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's back there doing a little bit more running. Uh, because it had to be done. Like it had to have been done either last night or this morning. Like, yeah, I don't know, but um, you scored a goal. Your health is good. Yeah. You're okay. Yeah. You, you played, you played a full 90 minutes and you scored. You're okay. <laughs> I mean, and, um, and good on them. And we're going to talk about the same thing about Caleb Wiley. If this ends up becoming true, like you're getting this done before the Olympics. So, you know, in case he goes out there, and has a crazy Olympics, they're getting them possibly at a discounted price, right? Because I think you could say that, you know, Amada and Wiley, while Amada has been heating up, they haven't had the greatest of seasons, right? Yeah. But there's, they still know there's value. And that's what we've been talking about for a while is like uh, someone looking at Amada, some people were saying he had zero value at this point. Like, 
I think there's there's teams out there that look and understand, yeah, they've been on a struggling team all year. We know that he has talent. We've seen the previous years, right? Mm-hmm. We've seen the tapes. I mean, I mean, we just looked at Jurgen Dom's tapes and gave him, you know, seventy five million dollars and a <laughs> lifetime uh, contract, and uh, Kanye Sweet at the Benz. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they. I think they they realize there's talent there and he just needs to be, you know, possibly on a better team. And it's sad, right? I mean, this is kind of the opposite situation of Yakamakis where Yakamakis was, he's hurt. And even when he came back, he wasn't doing anything. Well, this situation was Amada has been doing things lately and now he's leaving. And that just makes you a little bit sad. Yeah. And it, and it's been, you know, you've had the opportunity, you've had the opportunity to kind of see um, both of them go through pretty significant portions of their career in the bins, you know, and yeah. Almada has provided some quality entertainment over the past couple of years. You're not going to see a player like him in Atlanta for a long time. I think, I mean, I say that, but they, they might go out and sign somebody phenomenal tomorrow. I don't know, but that doesn't seem like that's the route they're going to go. You, what, you what do we say? What do you for, mean by that? Um, I mean, I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna find. I think Garth is gonna find somebody that's gonna be a little more established. Um, that could be a good thing, though. Absolutely, and it doesn't mean that you're not gonna get something similar out of them. Um, but you're gonna get somebody. This, and I'm not saying this is a negative at all, but like you're gonna get somebody who has been around the block, has maybe the raw talent too, but has a little bit more of a uh, experience to back it up and maybe fine tune things, which is great. That's what you want. Almada was, especially in the early part of his time in Atlanta, was just running off of raw talent and eating people alive. And that was just fun to watch. Um, And he'll still do that. But now, you know, what Club Leon is getting six months from now is a more fine-tuned Tiago Almada. And as an Atlanta fan, you have to hope that whoever Almada's replacement is, is essentially what, you know, Leon is getting. You want somebody that's, Maybe had some of the uh, the raw edges polished a little bit, the rough edges polished a little bit, and you're getting a more complete player, one that still is going to be able to be a playmaker and drive defenses insane, but can also facilitate things maybe a little better than Almada could, and not have to rely on raw talent. So I think that's where that's where Garth is going to go with things. We'll see, but it was fun watching Almada while he was here. As for Caleb, um. Uh, look, I put it in my article last night, but like I love Caleb. I think he, I think I just think he's better as a as a true attacker than he is having to worry about defending. And uh, who knows, you know, if he does end up in Strasbourg slash Chelsea, um, how they'll use him? Because I do feel like you get the right coach that could sit down with him and and give him a few months of just you know focus. They could really develop him into a a star left back. But as of right now, Caleb Wiley's skill set as an attacker is just much better. So, but again, that may not be our problem here in a couple of months. I'll always remember the Charlotte game and yeah. Charlotte, right? You know, those yep. two goals that he had early in that game. I mean, you know, it's, he hasn't had the greatest year either. I thought he was pretty aggressive and man. I mean, he, I don't know if he's going to, depending on what happens here and FEMLS reviews the last game, he definitely put his hands around, uh, uh, Jersey puller, I forget his yeah. name, uh, quite a few times, multiple times. Like that was a situation where, you know, I, they, I'm they, glad they went back and showed the replay because they, they halted play for, uh, what, like maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I was worried they were going to review that because it reminded me of uh, the Joseph Martinez Montreal situation, you know, in the yeah. net. Obviously it wasn't as aggressive, but I mean, Caleb kind of went off and, I, I was starting to wonder, and it didn't seem this way. I was curious if that guy said something to him. But really, it just seemed like it was they were just the heat of the moment. You know, they were uh, aggressive. Like, I, compared to hockey, usually when there's, like, two guys in front of the net yeah. know, fighting for space, that those guys are just going to start, you know, they're, eventually they just might start fighting. But here, it just it, it kind of reminded me of that situation. They both wanted the space, and the guy was pulling his jersey. And, you know, who knows? Maybe he did say something to him. I don't know. But then it, it just sent Wiley off, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is a thing, huh?" Yeah, and and we've seen that with Wiley, right? A couple of times. I remember Philly last not year. Not like that, though. Not no, but 
I, I've always felt like Wait, he was scoreboard. Yeah. Is that what you're talking? <laughs> I've always felt though, like he was, he's, he's one step away from just, cause he's not going to back down, right? He, he'll bow up and he'll, he'll go toe to toe with any grown man that's out there. And, and I like that about Caleb. And I like that about every player that seems to come through the Academy. Noah Cobb's the same way. Luke Brennan, same way. Um, a lot of them, Aiden Torres, same way. Like they don't care. They don't care that you're older or whatever. Um, they're not going to back down. And yeah, I mean, don't put your hands around people's throat for sure. But I mean, I would much rather see that because two days ago or two days prior in the same building, I saw your U S men's national team goalkeeper get absolutely clobbered. And then not a single U S player went and, and I'm not going to say the word, but didn't, they didn't show, um, some disrespect. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, definitely well, there, well, there was retaliation. It was just at the wrong time. It should have been the, that moment. It should have been, you know, you getting on top of dude that's laying there trying to, you know, cry it out. And, and like, I, I, I guess what I imagine you remember like old school, uh, stone cold, right? Like I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a wrestling reference here. I don't, I don't do this often, but cool. old school back in the day, stone cold, you know, somebody be laid out on the mat and he would get over to the top of them. And he would just be like, you know, standing over them, bent over face to face and just like right in their face, like shaking his head and all, you know, you, do you, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? I don't well, remember. I was going to say Stone Cold would have gave him the middle finger and then grabbed a couple of beers that and too. then poured the beers on, on to him. That, now, that would have been cinema. That would have been cinema. If, that would have been a if that would have been thing. Happening. I would have left the bins at that point because I never would have topped that moment. But um, You didn't yeah, watch I'm, soccer. The other day, you watched a WWE pre-scripted <laughs> yeah. match there. Like, I had a couple friends that were watching it, and I'm like, like sending them the messages. So I'm like, oh, uh, we scored a goal. Oh, no, no, we didn't. Uh, oh, now, now, uh, oh, the keeper's dead. Our, our, our keeper's dead. Oh, he's alive. Oh, we just got a red card. What is going on? Oh, we just scored. Really? Yeah. Oh, now we're losing. Or now, now it's a draw. Like that, like entire first half. Like I, I convinced people to turn the game on that like weren't watching the game. I'm like, you need to turn this on. Who knows what's gonna happen next? Yeah, I'm you gonna have a money in the bank cash in during this game. You don't know. <laughs> there might be a, a freaking cage that comes down from the rafters at some point like this is getting Sting's wild. gonna come down <laughs> just comes across the entire bins just floating along sorry Stops everybody that hates wrestling out. that's just that's our nerd moment there for a moment <laughs> but yeah anyway i wanted to see that um back to caleb though like he look I, i'll take i'll take that kind of fight all day because the men's national team didn't show it and that pissed me off but um anyway no value I mean, I look at transfer market, which we, we all know how accurate that is. But I mean, five million euros is what he's currently valued at. And uh, that's no chump change. So I don't know if you get that for him. You might. I mean, you're going with Chelsea's ownership group. You might get 25 million. Who knows? Like, but the, the fact you of the matter is interest. Sorry. You, you missed it on spaces. Uh, Bruno was actually on there. He goes, I can't wait to get 30 million uh, for Chelsea. For, for Wiley because they would pay for everything. So you were close to Bruno's joke. Oh, there we go. Bruno. Great months thing alike, buddy. But yeah, I, I think I think we're just gonna be looking at a vastly different squad here in the next two months. And like you said earlier, Rob Rob's gonna have a tough, tough go. But we said this these four games were gonna be a tough go and he's done well in them so far. So you're getting a little bit extra out of the squad that you have. You've got strikers that are providing numbers, at least. I mean, I see people that were like, oh, Daniel Rios didn't do anything yesterday. But he did. <laughs> like he, he had an assist. And, yeah, could he be better in front of goal? Absolutely. But he was at least being dynamic and helping out and providing things that um, you haven't really seen in a lot of backup strikers in Atlanta United's history. So, yeah, I'll take it all day. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be an interesting transfer window, right? I think that's what's going to happen here. And, and how much are they going to invest into the season? How much are they going to wait? Uh, you know, we are talking about all this, this flush of money. And depending on how all the new rules work in the transfer window, and I, I don't fully understand them, I'm sure we'll get a little bit better of an explanation as we get closer to the window. Um, you know, if, if you've got to invest some of this money, what do you do here? I mean, if you can buy Gregerson down now, because it, it's, it seems like a lot of money's coming in, right? If you can buy him down, then technically 
you could possibly bring in three DPs, which we thought was initially, you know, I mean, Garth said we were poor like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> well, now you're getting rid of, you've gotten rid of three players, right? And two of them are DPs, but one of them was not with Caleb. So you're obviously, I mean, there's already been talk about a left back possibly coming in. There yeah. was a rumor yesterday of a striker. I think more rumors are going to be start flying in here uh, in, in the next few weeks. And, and that's good because that's just showing that they want to invest here. And I'm fine with that as long as, you know, they leave possibly a little bit of flexibility for if there is a new manager next year. I, I you know, if if they don't have to fill them all, if, if, if there's nothing there, I just don't want them to force it. And we've talked about this before. This team has forced things throughout the years to, you know, to try to get a quick fix to get your team into the playoffs this year. This is more of a long-term project here. It's been a long-term project since Garth Lagerways come in, right? He's been cleaning things up. Um, we've talked about this so many times, but you've got so many players coming off um, your budget at the end of the year. And now you have potentially, you know, three DPs, possibly two U2, U22 spots um, next year. Like, and, you know, all the roster players and their salary going away. Like, this team is going to be insanely different than it was. And I think it's the, the full reboot here is is coming you know, at, at next year. And I think, you know, in March or, you know, late the last week of February, whenever the season starts, you're going to hopefully see something that you could be, you know, really excited about here. Yeah. The, the overall squad for, well, I, and I think you're also, it, it's beneficial. The overall squad is going to look different no matter what, but, you know, I always remember Garth said when he first got here that he, he makes his moves typically, in the summer transfer window, which internationally, that's kind of what you want. Right. And, but it seems like right now it honestly couldn't be more fortuitous for Atlanta because it's not just that you have the summer transfer window coming up when you likely have a handful of players leaving. You also have so many good players right now in the world that are either out of contract, the end of the contract, they have, ridiculously low release clauses or whatever. Like there's so many things going for you from a buyer's perspective and from a team that actually wants to spend money, you've got a lot. So take advantage of it. Um, obviously don't, like you said, don't force something that doesn't need to be forced. Don't go, you know, have the money burn a hole in your pocket and, and spend it just to spend it. But I, you know, I know that the scouting team that Atlanta United has, I know that they're, they're going to identify the right type of player that needs to come in. And then it's just a matter of seeing if you can convince that player to get here or players. And I always say it every year, the summer transfer window is the wild card for every MLS team. It can completely make or break a season for you. And this is, this is Atlanta's opportunity to kind of pull a, um, a Columbus from last year. I'm not saying that they're going to, be that dominant. They're not that dominant right now, but you, you, you've you got at least some momentum going in your favor. Now you go make the right moves in the summer and the last half of the season could be vastly different. And that's a good place to be. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. This is, this is exciting times. And, you know, Wednesday, I mean, you, you've got a good opportunity in New England. New England has not been playing very well. They just got, they just got destroyed. Nice. Yeah, they got destroyed by 5-1, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Columbus I, had I kept looking. Goal scorers last night. I think New England scored like first, and I was like, "Oh man, New England, here they come again." And then I looked. I was like, "Oh, there's one, two, three, four, <laughs> five. That's you need great. to look at whatever whatever Columbus did to them last night, because there's clearly a it, you know they had this New England had this little stretch of games where they did pretty well, um, but the, overall they've just not been a good team. Look at what they did last night. Look at what Columbus did and how they exploited them. And you're just going to have to do something similar because New England doesn't have the capabilities right now to to have a plan B. They can't even do their plan A correctly. So yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, this I, I agree. This is an opportunity really to go and continue to solidify points and, and build yourself up the standings for sure, which we'll talk yeah. about on Tuesday when we do our regular show. But, yeah. Yeah, Tuesday Rob, we're, we're changing the things up because of the week. So we'll be on Tuesday, but we figure with the Almada news, we'd hop on here real quick, and yeah, we'll be back Tuesday, and then Wednesday, the game, spaces after. Yeah. 
Be a busy is week there, again. Is there a game on? Is there a game on Saturday? Yes. Which one's that? That is a great question, dude. I barely that's even know. That's not the Utah game, is it? Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Yeah. Um, yes, which is in Utah, by the way. <laughs> you sitting there. You maybe you maybe start Utah. you maybe start questioning myself. And I was like, uh, I'm just gonna just stay quiet here. But yeah, you got Salt Lake and then and then you're right back at it on Tuesday. And that, and that's I get we'll get to it, but like that's a short turnaround for a long flight. Yeah. Yep. And considering you're you know You're already on short rest too. Yeah, you're on short rest and then also you're, you're not Wednesday, have... Saturday, Tuesday. Yeah. Not going to have a ton of players because some of them are going to be gone. <laughs> some of them already are gone. So yeah, we'll we'll talk about it for sure. But that's it's going to be an interesting week and a half for for sure. So, um, all right, patreoncom slash and spikes. Go join. Uh, we appreciate it because it it helps us pay the bills, helps us do what we do. Uh, we also do fun stuff uh, for Patreon watch alongs, um, little exclusives. Yeah, Discord, big, big draw. Been crazy lately. Yeah. Um, so much news. So much news there. Yeah, nonstop, nonstop, which is, which is fun. Of course, obviously talking Copa and the Euros and all the craziness with that. So, yeah, y'all come join that. Um, Scarvesandspikes.com, the website. Y'all go check out the articles. We got articles going up just about every day. So, y'all go, uh, go hang out there and get involved as well. And uh, with that, Sydney will be back, I think, too off of vacation and we might be back at full strength on Tuesday. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So, all right. Good stuff. We appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you hanging out with us for a half hour and we will see y'all again on Tuesday. RIP Italy. <laughs>